So let's take one more look at how to manually add buttons before we do it in script. Important things to note are that children go under the container and not the dropdown. They have a layout element attached, and the min height on that layout element is what controls their height. We're going to make a class to represent a child button, so open the dropdown script, and under the dropdown class, add a public class dropdown child, and make sure it's serializable. Inside, store a public game object child object, public text child text, and public button dot button clicked events child events. Then we're going to add private git accessors to the child's layout element component, button component, and image component. The constructor will take in a drop down parameter parent. In the constructor, to store the child object, create a new button and access its game object. Then add a layout element component to the child object. Set the child text by finding the text component in the child object's children. And finally, set the child events to the button's on click property. Create a public bool update child that also takes in a drop down parent. This function will immediately return false if the child object happens to be null, and otherwise it'll return true. The purpose of this function is to update the layout element's height, update the image sprite and type, set the child text font, font color, and font size, update the button normal, highlighted, and pressed colors, and finally update the button's on-click property. For some of these, we'll have to add additional variables to the dropdown class, but right now we can already set some values based on the parent's current variables. The child image sprite and type will be equal to the parent's image sprite and type, the child text font and color will be equal to the parent's main text font and color, and then set the child's button dot on click to child events. Now go into the dropdown class and add a dropdown child list named children. Then right click on the list and resolve the error. The additional variables that need to be added to the dropdown are a float for the child height, an int for the child font size, and three colors for the normal, highlighted, and pressed states. Now that that's done, we can finish the update child function by setting the element's min height to the parent's child height, setting the child text font size to the parent's child font size, and to set the button colors, Store the button's color block by declaring a color block and setting it to button.colors. Then set the normal, highlighted, and pressed colors of that color block to the appropriate variables in the parent. Open the dropdown editor script and create a void function named addChild. This function will check if the current dropdown's list of children is null, and if that's the case, it'll create a new list. Then it'll add a new dropdown child to children, passing in the current dropdown. Create another void function named update children. This function should also check if children is null, but simply return if that's the case. If it gets past the null check, the function will loop through the current dropdown's children. For each child, if current dropdown.children child current dropdown is false, then that means the child object is null, and so it should be removed from the children by calling remove at and passing in index i. Jump into the oninspector GUI function and add a GUI layout button with the label add child. This button should call the add child function we just created. Before testing this, make sure you also call the update children function at the bottom of oninspector GUI. In Unity, delete the existing buttons since we created those manually, and then hit Add Child a few times to add some new children. The next thing we're going to set up in the On Inspector GUI are the color fields for the button states. So since I want the main button's color to match the children's normal color, I'm going to set the current dropdown image's color to current dropdown dot normal. Then set up a color field for the normal color variable. Hit Ctrl X to cut it, and then hit Ctrl V to paste it three times. Change the second to highlighted and the third to pressed. If you try to test this in Unity, the main button's color will change appropriately, but the children's won't. To fix this, go into the update child function and make sure that after setting the color block's colors, you're applying those changes by actually setting the button.colors back to B. 
Now all the fields that we currently have set up in the inspector should be working properly. Inside the drop-down editor and before the for loop and update children, I'm going to add some space and then an edit children label. Adding editor styles merely customizes the appearance of the label or field. Then add a float field for the child height and an int field for the child font size. Putting these fields outside of the for loop applies them to all of the buttons, as you can see when you test this in Unity. Right now, if you want to delete buttons, you have to delete them from the hierarchy, and we also can't edit details of the individual buttons yet, so let's look at that next. Inside the for loop, create a text field for the current child's child text text. And if you go into Unity, you'll see that a field shows up for each child in the list. I'm just going to add some more space right above the for loop to separate the individual settings from the main settings and then test in Unity. Next, add a GUI layout button labeled Remove, and if it's clicked, it will call Destroy Immediate on the current dropdown.childreni.child object. Now we'll add two more buttons labeled Move Up and Move Down, which will allow you to move the children around in the hierarchy. The way the buttons display isn't very pretty, so I'm going to put them inside a horizontal group so they take up less space. In order for them to work, first make sure their position in the hierarchy is being updated according to their position in the list of children by setting the sibling index of the child to I at the beginning of the loop. In move up, if I minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, meaning the current child isn't already at the highest position, create a temp drop down child to hold the value of children I, then set children I to children I minus 1, and children I minus 1 to temp. So to move a child down in the hierarchy is done the same way, except that you're checking if I plus 1 is less than or equal to the number of children meaning it's not already at the bottom of the hierarchy. And just to keep things organized, I'm going to create a region named Buttons around the buttons we just added and then close the region. So what we're going to do next is display all the children's on-click properties. Drawing properties is done a bit differently than everything else we've done so far in that there's additional updating functions that need to be called alongside the GUI layout function and we have to set separate variables in the custom editor to store the current drop-down's list of children as a serialized property. So I'll name the serialized property variable children props, and in the onEnable function, set it to serialized object dot find property and pass in the name of the property, which is children. So like I said, there's additional updating functions that need to be called, and the first one is serialized object dot update if dirty or script. This should be called beforehand, and then serialized object dot apply modified properties has to be called afterwards to apply any changes you made to the property field we're about to add. Between these, we'll call editor GUI layout dot property field, and then to get the child events property, say children props dot get array element at index i dot find property relative, and then pass in the name of the property. If you've done everything correctly, then the on-click property of each child should appear in the inspector.